Joining me now is Andrea Schaller, who is Head of V2X Technology Strategy at Bosch Mobility. Andreas, thank you very much for talking with Telecom TV. Can I start by asking you about the role of Bosch within the connected mobility sector? So as a global tier one, Bosch is also active in connectivity as it's, it's, te it's telematic units, but of course it's also services for fleet and for passenger cars. So it's a wide view of different software, hardware and service activity. And can I ask about your role with 5G AA? How important is the work that 5G AA does and how does it align with your objectives? I mean, we joined 5G AA 2017 and it's an important thing for a tier one is they would like to get to sell common solution to different OEMs. Now, the widen the market. So you would like to, to somehow increase your market share and so it's important that we generate this common roadmap, that we get a little bit of a agreement between the OEM on the technology they would like to use. And this is the reason why I'm also heading with BMW and Volkswagen the roadmap activities, because the interest is really to focus on the use cases and the technology we need for the future. Now, 5G is still in its infancy, really, in terms of, of deployment and the specification work. There's more to come with, with 5G. But where 5G is today, what does it offer for the connected mobility sector? What solutions are possible today? So, as, as you just said, so the standardization is done for consumer devices and it's always a little bit faster. So at the moment, if you look at uh, vehicles worldwide, they all are based on 3GPP release 15, the first standardization of 5G. So this is a uh, broadband scenario. So you use it for entertainment, you use it for teleoperation, you use it for automatic valid parking, for example. Uh, you use it for support of AD level 3 parking by MAPS update. These are typically examples we use it at the moment. And as the 3GPP and other associations work through advancing the specifications, we get more specifications included in 5G. Let's look ahead maybe five years or so. What sort of solutions are going to be possible then in this sector? So as I said, we are now at the release 15 is implemented. Release 16 is actually why we are here at this event. No? So with 5G V2X, the first chipsets now, we are showing the capabilities of 5G V2X with release 16. So release 17 and 18 then will be dedicated to non-terrestrial network support. So this is a, something which is getting speed up very quickly at the moment. Uh, we see many announcements of different satellite players. So in the automotive industry, this will come with release 17 and 18. And then uh, finally, you have release 19 uh, to some 5G up before 6G will start. No? Now, you spoke today at the event here in Berlin on, on a panel that was looking at how you leverage 5G V2X to enable new advanced services and, and solutions. What was the consensus there? What, what, what's your advice? Now, how, how can we how can we achieve our aims here? Yeah, so what I had in the panel, was I had to talk about V2X and ADAS. No? And what I did is I started with UNCAP and I said that there were different categories like uh, safe driving, supporting information to the driver, increasing awareness of the driver, and finally sending warnings to the driver that the vehicle takes an action. So maybe it breaks, you know? So that's a far future. But the first information and awareness is really what we saw today by different OEMs, which they are doing at the moment. It's already implemented. What I presented then is that with the work in 5GA on automated valid parking, we already worked on functional safe system where a system outside of the vehicle controls the vehicle. So there's a certification for that, there's a standard for that, and now what we have to do is to leverage this learning for new use cases, also including, of course, 5G. 
So as you said there, we have to leverage that learning now. So what do we, telecoms industry, the mobility industry, the automotive industry, what do we need to do collectively to achieve our aims? So from, from an OEM perspective, and I'm only the tier one, you know, but OEM perspective always likes to scale. So it's always difficult if there is solution in country A by provider C. Uh, and it doesn't work in the next country. So it's important to scale. So we ha if a solution is there, the network feature should be there in all countries. That's very important. This is because otherwise our solutions will always fail because people will say, oh, Bosch, you have a nice solution. It only works in Germany. They will never implement it. So network features has to be there globally. Andreas, let's hope the industry heeds your advice there and uh, we see a lot of progress in this sector. Very exciting. Thanks for talking with us today. Thank you very much.